Hi scholars, welcome back. Miss Luna here and today for Read Aloud, we are going to be reading the story, Mary Had a Little Ham. So before we start reading our book, I want us to be thinking in our heads, what are the characteristics of a fairy tale? What are the characteristics of a fairy tale? Hmm. All right, and if you have your answer, you can go ahead and shout them out. Yeah, so the characteristics of a fairy tale are that they begin with once upon a time, have good and evil characters, they have a happy ending, they always have a problem, and events occur in threes. If you said any of those, give yourself a round of applause. Awesome job. So today, when we are reading Mary Had a Little Ham, we are going to be seeing how this is a modern day fairy tale. How this is a... That's right, how this is a modern day fairy tale chant. So right now, I want us to do our modern day fairy tale chant. So first, I'm going to do it, because it's okay if you don't remember. It's kind of a little bit tricky. And then we're going to do it together. Got it? All right. So, my turn. Modern day fairy tales are fairy tales that we change up. So it takes place now, not a long time ago. Awesome. Now let's do it together, all right? Modern day fairy tale chant. Get ready, go. Modern day fairy tales are fairy tales that we change up. So it takes place now, not a long time ago. Awesome. Now I want you guys to try to do it by yourselves. All right? Awesome. So, modern day fairy tale chant. Get ready, go. Awesome job, scholars. And while we're seeing how this is a modern day fairy tale, we are going to be seeing if the theme, remember, theme is the big idea, message, or moral of a story. If the theme is the same as the traditional fairy tale of this story. All right? We're going to be looking for that, okay? So, let's start reading. Mary had a little ham. Mary had a little lamb. Wrong. That's right. Hold on to your woolies. There was a boo-boo with the ba, ba The old goose lady got her tails mixed up. What Mary had was a little ham. A corker of a porker. Stanley was the last in the litter of the Sn Snoutowski brood. He was quite handsome, very pink, and extremely talented. Oh, scholars, right now I want us thinking in our heads. Start thinking. What kind of story is this and how do you know? What kind of story is this and how do you know? Taking a couple of seconds to think to yourselves, what kind of story is this? Hmm. How do I know? Hmm. All right, and if you have your answer, you can go ahead and shout it out. That's right. This kind of story is a modern day fairy tale. And we know that is because they're changing it up. What they're changing is the characters in our story. Awesome job, scholars. All right, let's continue reading. <clears throat> Mary knew Stanley had that special something right from his very first oink. He was not one of those little piggies that went to the market. Uh-uh. Nor was he one of those little piggies that just stayed home. Nope. He did not pig out. 
even in fact he was a little piggy who rarely ate roast beef and Stanley as wee as he was certainly was no crybaby no 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 Stanley was an actor in fact a regular little ham He could make them laugh, he could make them cry, and wow, could those little pig's feet hoof it. Stanley could do it all. He was very versatile. Mary was Stanley's biggest fan. Stanley Santowski, you're wonderful, she would say. She was his best audience. Bravo, Stanley, bravo, she would applaud. And Mary always told him she thought he was the most talented pig she had ever met. Stanley, you're the most talented pig I've ever met. The two became inseparable. Everywhere that Mary went, Stanley was sure to go. It wasn't too surprising when he followed her to school one day. Yes, he knew it was against the rules, but he wanted to make the children laugh at his new play. They did. We love Stanley, they all squealed, swooning over the little swine. Well, Mary knew that with that kind of talent, there was no keeping Stanley down on the farm, just doing summer stock. No doubt about it, the little pig was headed for the bright lights of Broadway. So, guys, right now, we're going to pause. I want us to be thinking in our heads, how is the theme similar to Mary had a little lamb? How is the theme similar to Mary had a little lamb? And remember that theme is the big idea, message, or moral of a story. So how is that similar to Mary had a little lamb? How is this similar to Mary had a little ham? Little lamb. <laughs> Taking a couple of seconds to think about it. Hmm. All right, and if you have your answer, you can go ahead and shout it out. That's right, so the theme is similar to Mary had a little ham, little lamb, Ooh. because in this story and in Mary had a little lamb, Mary is taking Stanley to school. And we know that in Mary had a little lamb, she took the pig to school too, and all the other animals, even though it was against the rules. So that's how the theme, so the big idea, is the same in both stories. Awesome job. All right, let's keep on reading. The two friends promised to write and always keep in touch. Mary kissed him on the snout for good luck. Remember, Stanley, she said, as they both waved tearful farewells. You're leaving here a pig, but you'll be coming back a star. Stanley went to 42 cattle, cattle calls that very first week in the city. There were hundreds of hams just like Stanley at those auditions, all hoping to land their first pig part in the theater. But their directors were not interested in Stanley or his talent. Before he even had a chance to finish singing, he would be ushered to the exit. Me, me, me. Too short. Next. And la, la, la. Too chubby, next. And again, fa la la, lose that hunker of a nose and change the name. Next, huh? You're boring me, kid. Boring. With little success and after much rejection, Stanley began to doubt himself and his talent. He wrote to Mary, am I really too short? Should I shed a few pounds? Could I spare a few ribs? He pondered his porty profile in the mirror and waited to hear from his friend. Of course, Mary wrote back immediately. 
Nonsense, pig slop. Mary was right, that's, thought Stanley. He was a fine-looking hunk of a pork. A bit stocky, perhaps, but nonetheless handsome. Pink, proud. Change his style? Never. Switch his moniker to the likes of Hamilton or Bacon? No siree. It would be Snoutowski lit up in lights on the marquee for all to see. Right there, and then it seemed impossible, improbable. Then Stanley thought of Mary. She believed in him. I believe in me, too, the little pig sang out. Stanley had a feeling way deep down inside that he was going to make it. No matter what, it was going to mean hard work, lots of determination, and probably some luck. But he was going to do it all. However, pig parts were few and far between. Oh yes, Stanley did get a small part here. He managed to get his pig's foot in the door there. But while waiting for that big break, Stanley, like a lot of young actors, had to bring home the bacon by working as a part-time taxi driver, driver and singing waiter. Days passed into weeks, weeks passed into months, then more months. Yes, people knew the name Stanley Snotowski. Unfortunately, the only place they knew it from was the restaurant. Snotowski! Burgers and fries for the table, number four. Make it snappy. Back on the farm, Stanley was still in Mary th Mary's thoughts. She kept saving her pennies for the day she knew she would see her little ham starring on Broadway. And she wrote him once a week, always with an encouraging message. Just remember, Stanley, sing it out. Sing out. You can do it. I can do it, Stanley said aloud one day while driving his taxi, his, his, tas his taxi, ooh. I will do it. Then, just at that moment, who should hail his cab on the corner of Central Park South and Fifth Avenue, but none other than the famous Broadway producers, Hoggers and Hammerswine. Take us to the 42nd Street Theater, my, port my portly young pig said Hoggers as he and Hammerswine climbed into Stanley's cab. With the meter ticking, his heart beating, and the letter from Mary. By his side, Stanley got into gear, got up the gum, gum station, and sang out with gusto. Right to the avenue, I will take you to 42nd Street. Hoggers looked at Hammerswine. Hammerswine looked at Hoggers. He's, he's, he's spectacular, declared Hammerswine to Hoggers. He's, he's, he's not standing, declared Hoggers to Hammerswine. By the time the taxi got to Times Square and Stanley, and Stanley had swung an overture and three courses, the producers wanted him for their new Broadway show. Stanley became an overnight success. His name was up in lights. Critics raved. Everyone who was anyone was talking about Stanley Snotowski. He was a smash in South Pacificate. <laughs> then he was box office bofo in the pig and I. He did it, they cheered him in pig Pygmalion. Stanley even won the Best Actor for the Year Award for his role in the famous play Pork Chop on a Hot Tin Plate. Then he got the biggest part of his entire career, the lead in Hamlet. However, Stanley wondered if he could really cut the mustard in one of the Shakespeare's class classics. Opening night, backstage, alone in his dressing room, Stanley put on his grease paint and worried. He put on his costume and worried. He waited for his cue and worried. Stanley had a belly full of butterflies. Could he really do it? He wasn't all sure the show could go on. Then he read the note that Mary had sent to his dressing room. Dear Stanley, the world is your stage. You can do it. Your friend, Mary. 
There was a knock on his door. You're wrong, Mr. Snotowski. Break a leg. Stanley put the note in his pocket. He waited in the wings. The house lights dim. The curtain went up. He made his entrance. entrance. The spotlight was on him. The audience was breathless. To oink or not to oink? That is the question. Bravo, bravo, bravo. The applause was a thunder. It was thunderous. The cheers, Stephanie. What a talent. What an actor. What a pig, roared the audience. Stanley took a bow. He was, tri he was a triumph, an absolute sensation. And Mary was sitting in the balcony to see it all. She smiled. Yes, she had always known that her Stanley had the talent, that special something. She wasn't surprised, not one bit. After all, she had known all along that her little pig was born a ham. And that was no baloney. The end. All right, scholars, so we just read Mary Had a Little Ham. So, before I give you your final question, and you guys write it, answer it, and write it down on a piece of paper, right now, what are the characteristics of a fairy tale? What are the characteristics of a fairy tale? Hmm. All right, if you have your answers, you can go ahead and shout them out. That's right. The characteristics of a fairy tale are that they begin with once upon a time, have good and evil characters, have a happy ending, they always have a problem, and events occur in threes. Awesome job. Now, I want us to do our modern day fairy tale chant. So, modern day fairy tale chant, get ready, go. Modern day fairy tales are fairy tales that we change up so it takes place now, not a long time ago. Awesome. So, right now, I want you guys to go and get a piece of paper and I want you to answer this question using your race response. What kind of story is this and how do you know? What kind of story is this and how do you know? So scholars, from here on now, I want you guys to be answering this question on a piece of paper. Bye scholars!